fabric is the work of the British filmmaker Peter Strickland, whose idiosyncratic past work has had critics and audiences raving. With In Fabric, he's fetishised a red dress, which Sheila, Marianne Joan Baptiste, buys at a sale at the elegant Dentley and Soapers department store. Now, there's something decidedly odd about the store, not least the salespersons, led by bewigged Miss Lockmore, Fatima Mohammed, whose cryptic dialogue is elusive. I'm just looking, thank you. The hesitation in your voice soon to be an echo in the recesses of the spheres of retail. The era is the 90s, apparently, although the look is the 1970s. Sheila's recently separated from her husband. She lives with her son, Vince, Jaigun Ayer, and is irritated by his girlfriend, Gwen, Gwendolyn Christie. She goes on blind dates with men she connects with through newspaper ads. It turns out that the dress is malevolent. The woman who modelled it in the store's catalogue Sid Sir Babbitt Knudsen was killed at a zebra crossing. Sheila soon suspects evil intentions on the part of the dress when accidents seem to happen around it. At the midway point, the focus of the film abruptly turns to Reg Speaks, Leo Bill, a washing machine repairman. A mate picks up the dress at a charity shop for Reg to wear at his Bucks night and whoops, his fiance Babs, Hayley Squires, is interested in it for herself. What do you think? It's all right, yeah. Now, somehow, the second half of the film is less interesting than the first, and maybe it, it's because Marianne Jean-Baptiste is so fabulous as Sheila. We're invested in her and her fate. The film looks great, particularly the first half, with reflected images, vivid colours, and with an intriguing soundtrack. Strickland said he's not really interested in plot, he's into atmosphere and character. Well. He certainly created atmosphere in this. It's just a shame that he moved away from Sheila because Reg's spiel about the potential problems of washing machines sends everyone to sleep and it was tempting to follow suit. I've not experienced Strickland's films before. He's apparently a fan of Italian giallo films with the works of people like Dario Argento appealing to him particularly. And to tell you the truth, while I like atmosphere and character, I also like plot. Something I think Strickland abandons midway through in fabric. This is really an intriguing, if totally infuriating film, <laughs> isn't it, on so many <laughs> levels. I mean, it's a kind of horror film on one level and it's a, it's a satire on consumerism on the other. And I'm not sure which really kind of works the most effectively. The thing that totally intrigued me, though, is what, why the dress with this magic power it has picks on such sort of poor subjects to, to, to murder? Why doesn't it pick on people who are powerful, politicians or people that have real purchase in the community? These are really poor, dispossessed, disenfranchised people that it picks on to do terrible things to. I thought that was really quite intriguing with it. And there's some other wonderful satire which I loved. There's some HR characters. Yes, who turn up I was going to mention that. They are just fantastic. I mean, we all know, anyone who's worked in corporate life knows that you never trust HR people. I mean, they're all just tools of the establishment. They're tools of, of corporate life, really. They're there to sort of put you down. They're not there to help you in the slightest. And these two men are the most fabulous examples of that. They are, but they're like from a different film, not that it matters. But I also liked Reg. You didn't like Reg so much, but I thought Reg was the most fabulous character. He is so ultimately boring. Uh, uh, he's fabulous. I mean, he's just great. Actors would love to play that character. He's, I uh, love those HR people that sort of say that she has an uninspiring handshake. Yeah, and that yes. she's sort of... That, so that's one of the complaints mm. about her. And another is that she spent just slightly too long in the toilet. Yes. And that people are timing her. Yes. You know, and she, I, I mean... It's very Let odd. me congratulate you, though, on your very nice hairstyle. <laughs> it is, you know, the way they, they try and ingratiate yes. themselves into her life. It's just Look, it's, it's I, very funny. I, I was invested. I, mm. don't, I just didn't like the, the chop in the middle. Apparently he wanted to make more episodes, but he didn't have the funds to do it. Oh, I see. So yes. it, and at this, this sort of schism in the middle, I think, is pretty, pretty uncomfortable. Well, I read something too. I think it sort of harks back to Ealing Films... Uh, the anthology films uh, of the 50s as well, kind of deliberately, the horror films, which had four or five chapters in them. Yeah. So that would that would make sense. And um, are you being served, you know, that sort of mm. archness in the department store? <laughs> well, she's wonderful, the department store. But lady also who... that sex scene mm. with the store's owner. Uh, Looking what? on. I mean, that the was, model with the, genitals, I mean. That's right, the mannequin that bleeds. It's all <laughs> getting a bit... 
Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> interesting movie altogether. <laughs> it held me. It held my interest. Well, uh, the first totally. half did me too. Yeah. I look. I would give this three and a half stars. I'd give it three and a half as well. It is pretty inconsistent, but <laughs> and infuriating, but totally intriguing. <laughs> It's a pretty dress. Anything nice in the sails? Just a dress.